Hello everyone, hope you're all having a great day. Today is part two, uh, the swatching part of my haul video that I hopefully have released. It has been a few more days and finally getting quiet around the house to swatch all these colors out for you. I've already poured them um, in this palette that I have to the side. I have some Roman Schmal, uh, more Windsor Newton, and I also have um, a few Viridians to compare. So you're gonna see those. The new colors from Asaro. Uh, I have those all poured in a pan, ready to swatch. First, I'm going to start with the Roman Schmal paints. I have the windows open today, so you might hear a lot of birds, and of course, you'll probably hear my dog Bella at some point. I love Roman Schmal paints. They're definitely one of my top 10 brands. So this is Aquarius Red. It's made from PR214. It's absolutely stunning. And I'm not sure if I've tried this and purchased this. I think I have. I can't remember if this is a new color or if I purchased this because I needed another one for one of my palettes, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, very nice color. Next is Quinacridone Maroon. This should be a new color. I wanted to try for fall. This is quinacridone maroon. It's made from PR206. This one seems just a teeny bit harder to wet. Yes, this is going to be really pretty for fall. Of course, it is. It is October now. Really pretty. It's almost like a. It almost reminds me of Daniel Smith uh, burnt orange a little bit but I don't have that pigment information handy. Next is Manganese Violet, which I wanted to compare with Schmincke's version. This is Manganese Violet. It's made from PV16. Ooh, that's quite nice. The Schmincke version that I wanted to compare it to, but it's pretty nice. And I did not pre-wet that, so I bet if I would have pre-wet that, I might have been able to get, but I like to show, I like to know, um, I like to, I like to use them all from not wetting them so I know what I'm really going to get. Next is, this is Lazurite or Lapis Lazuli and it's an earth pigment so there's no pigment information. All right, so um, this one has some white milky, um, can you see that? Um, which has happened a few times with my Roman Schmal, but I don't notice that with a lot of brands. So I don't know if that means that it's some filler coming to the top or what exactly that means. But uh, it does say it's an earth pigment. So if you know what that means, <laughs> be sure to comment below. Okay, so this is coming across more like a gray, but it's an interesting color. You can see this being pretty in the winter. Other than that, it doesn't do, it's not doing much for me right now. Next is Aquarius Cobalt Blue. This is made from PB72. That's a nice color. Let's see how much granulation we get from that. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to see. Okay, here's Thalo Turquoise. This is made from PB16. And that is a very lovely color. Very, very pigmented, very bright. Um, yeah, I'm really liking all of these except for the this one. I probably could have done without that one, but it might be nice when I mix it with it or something. So this is Viridian Green. It's very nice. This is made from PG18. And we'll see how much granulation and everything we get. All right, next is Cobalt Green Dark. This was a new color 
a few months ago I, and I had purchased them all when they were released and this is the only one that had sold out and I wasn't able to get this one. Oh, that's nice. That's lovely. It's very opaque. Uh, at least the Schmincke version is. That's very nice, but that's going to be really pretty for fall. Oh, I like that a lot. Let's see. Deep Green Gold is made from PY129. Oh, that's pretty. It's quite bright. It's almost fluorescent. Next is Perline Green Deep. It's made from PBK32. So it got out of order. It should have been, <laughs> it probably should have been one over. And it seems like usually Perline Green is made from PBK31. So this is a different, uh, Perline green. Very pretty. So it would be great for some landscapes. All right, next is transparent brown. I never thought I would paint landscapes and I'm liking it now, but. I never dreamed I would like colors like that. <laughs> I usually always just like the fun, pretty colors. And now I'm really drawn to some of these really interesting neutrals and colors. Oh, that's a lovely color. This is transparent brown. This is made from PBR 23. That's really pretty. I think I like that better than Clinicrida Maroon. All right, next is PBK 11. This is what's found in um, all of the Rembrandt colors, the dust colors that are so fun. Um, really pretty colors too that have PBK 11. It's a really fun mixing color. And I want to compare all of the brands to see who makes the most affordable, most granulating PBK 11. So far, of course, I like Schmincke the best, but uh, I'm always open-minded to try and see if there's a more affordable option out there. All right, so there's all those colors swatched out. So next is the Windsor Newton. All right, so let's see how this rewets. I did pour this earlier. It's just been long enough that it's hardened some, and but it's rewetting very nice. Um, that's one thing that has me a little perplexed about Windsor Newton. Everything I read made it like they wanted you to buy the pans if you were going to dry them and that hasn't been the case at all. I've been able to re-wet everything. I'm, maybe there's a couple of colors that I haven't tried yet but I haven't had any trouble pouring from pans. Sorry about the noise behind me. My dog Bella is trying to be cute because she wants more attention and she has had plenty of attention this morning but she's needy and it's never enough. Okay, here is Rose Matter Genuine. Look at this, it's such a pretty color. Seems like I read this is from the root of the Rose Matter Genuine. That's what piqued my interest, of course. So it's not the most, I think it's not the most light fast, but it's so pretty, it's just so delicate. It's perfect, it's gonna be perfect for spring. Don't want that much. Really pretty. All right. Next is Rose Door, and this is one of my favorite colors from Windsor Newton. I'm not sure how light fast it is, but it's just a really pretty color, and I used all of mine up. If this one, okay, so this one is not rewetting that well. I can get it, but it's this is more difficult to rewet. So this might be one that you might want to try. If you're not going to paint it fresh, you might want to try the half pan version. It's a really pretty, kind of a delicate color. I use it in the spring. It's not too awful pigmented now, but I am re-wetting it after I let it dry. So it's a really pretty delicate coral color.
but I think I actually do prefer that in half pan. Of course, buying tube version is usually more cost efficient. I figure, and to me, half pans are kind of like the convenience way. Depending on the manufacturer, of course, it's never the same. So next is Viridian, and this is re-wetting very nice. This is re-wetting perfectly. And that's a very deep saturated color. Hmm. I wonder if that's really only PG-18. I Most of them are not quite that pigmented. See how that granulates. It's very nice. Next I have uh, Quinacridone Gold, which is from Winsor & Newton. Quite bright. Um, you can really see that PBY 150 in there. And I find this is such a good mixing color, so I really like to have one in every palette. <laughs> it's one of my favorite mixing colors. Uh, it's interesting though, this uh, the Windsor Newton, they make theirs with PR206, PV19, and PY150. I don't think I've seen anybody mix a violet in with theirs before. Um, it's usually just an orange and a yellow pigments. So that's interesting, but it looks like a nice color. I'll have to mix with it to see if I like it really. But I made the fatal error of picking the color by the name and not the pigment information, which I always say not to do, and then I went and did it. <laughs> Next is Perline Violet. This is PV29. Oh, that's really pretty. That's really pretty. I originally never really liked Windsor Newton. Um, I just, I don't know, they kind of seemed kind of boring and sleepy, but I did try their Potter's Pink, thanks to one of my sweet friends here on my YouTube channel, Helen. And, um, I realized, okay, I've only tried their basic boring colors in their palette. I need to try some of my favorite colors and then know if, <laughs> if I will, um, to see if I really don't like Winsor Newton or if I just hadn't tried the nice colors yet. So I would love to know your favorite color from Winsor Newton because I think every brand has a couple colors they do really well. And that's kind of what I'm doing is hunting for those. All right, next is Quinn Violet, PV55. And, oh, look at that, that's really pretty. But I do tend to like the more quinacridones and the kind of more new modern colors. And then I like the really funky earth pigments and things like that too, so. <laughs> I just don't like the boring normal colors, I guess. And they're usually good mixing colors, but I have plenty of those. Okay, next is Cobalt Turquoise. And I have the version of the Turquoise Light. This looks like it's going to be really pretty, have more green in it. This Cobalt, this is Cobalt Turquoise. It's made from PB28 and PB36. And, oh yes, that's lovely. That's really pretty. I can't go wait to mix this. Next is Paraline Green Dark. Yeah, that's really nice. That's really nice. Um, and I, I love mixing these. So these three, these are colors that almost every palette I have along with a few other colors, with along some standard mixing colors. But these are kind of my, um, outside of the standard mixing color, these are some of the colors that I really like to have my palettes. 
and I can mix with them. I can make um, grays and blacks and everything I need to. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with all of those. So I'm going to set those aside and we will continue on swatching. Okay, now we're going on with the Viridians. First is Old Holland and it's Viridian Green Deep. There's no information on the wrapper, so you'll have to look at the website. But I believe it's, I believe when I ordered it, I looked and it was PG-18. Yes, this has to be PG-18. And this looks like the real PG-18. That one's our Newton. That did not look like the real PG-18, I have to say. Um, if anybody knows, I don't know how to tell. Uh, anyone have a microscope? Or <laughs> This looks like the real deal. And that is what I want. I want the real PG-18. All of the beautiful, they've used it for ages and it granulates and makes wonderful mixes. And it's very pretty. So this one would be on the good list. It's a little bit more delicate, but very pretty. And the color doesn't look, it doesn't look like it's boosted with PG-7. And that's what, I mean, I don't want to make false accusations, but the Windsor Newton looks like it's boosted with PG-7. And if they are, that's fine, but they should put it on the pigment information. And try to get a little deeper. Okay, that's quite lovely. All right, next I have uh, Marimer Blue. Marimer Blue half pans, in case you haven't seen any of their half pans. I love when companies do this. Uh, Schmincke does this uh, most of the time. Sometimes theirs are empty, but they not only have the half pan all ready for you, they have the name and the number on the side. Uh, the only thing I would add is, I would try to add write down the pigment information on one side. They also have the brand name on the bottom of the pan. So that's a nice little detail and some, like Schmincke does that, Holbein does that. Holbein also has a magnet. Most people don't care, but if you care, I thought I would show that because I appreciate the little details like that. Uh, it had some paper that was a little hard to come off, so I think they pack that while it's still wet. So let's see how that... Let's see how that re -wet. So this is, they're saying this is PG-18. And sometimes PG-18 can be a little hard to re-wet in pan form. And uh, depending on the brand, this one is a little harder than the old Holland, but not terrible. But it's not as pigmented, it looks like, either. Yeah, this one's pretty weak. So, but this one might need to sit with water and might need some special attention. <laughs> I'll still use it. I'll still mix with it. Next is uh, Jackson's version and theirs is PG-18 and PG-7, uh, which is the same as Sennelier. And they have changed their half pans, so I'm not sure when they switch to that. Okay, so you can definitely tell it see the PG-7, which is a really good mixing color. But you don't get as much granulation with the ones that are um, just kind of call it boosted. And I like PG-18 for the granulation. Um, personally, is what I'm going for. So, but... Uh, that's a very budget-friendly one, I'll say that. That was the most budget-friendly by far. Okay, our Sandy Hill cranes are back, and so you might hear them in the background. They're really loud. I, I love them. I hope they come in our yard again. <laughs> so here's all those swatched out. So out of these, my favorite is definitely Old Holland, and um, it was easier to re-wet and more pigmented, but yet yeah, looks real. So um, out of those... Um, We'll compare, this is the Windsor Newton. Um, 
there's definitely some granulation. I will I will do a comparison video at some point, uh, comparing all of them, and I'll uh, it gives you an idea. Um, but I definitely would go for these two. And after they've dried, they, these have almost dried. Here's the Winsor Newton colors now that they've dried. I'm really happy with all of these colors. All right. Next, I'm going to be swatching out all of these beautiful colors from Asaro. And I had only tried the ver the emerald green, which is Asaro's Viridian Green made from PG-18, and I absolutely loved it, so I couldn't wait to get more colors. Now, if you've not heard of Asaro watercolors, they are a handmade watercolor. They are made in Belgium by a woman. I'm going to swatch all of these out. I have them all on my ceramic dishes over here and I have all the pigment information wrote out um, on arches. I'm using um, arches 100% cotton and I'm going to swatch all of these out and see how they rewet once they are poured. Okay, so they rewet really nice. Very nice. All right, so this is a Sorrow Light. Um, this is made with PY 154. And that is a really nice yellow. Seems like kind of a medium yellow, not too cool or too warm, but really pretty. Okay, next is Powdery Pink. It's made with white and um, it's made from PW6 colon 1 and PR122. Um, it's very creamy. This is going to be really pretty for fall. It's kind of like a light, like a pastel uh, mauve color in the palette anyway. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of like a pastel mauve color. So it's probably going to be a bit opaque, but it might make good mixing colors. And um, I don't know if they have a potter's pink. Next is a Sorrow Rose, and this is PR122. So you could take this and use white to mix this color, of course. This looks like a really nice kind of magenta color. These are all re-wetting really nice. Not hard to re-wet at all. That's really pretty really pretty it's very bright and kind of crisp I don't know if that's coming across in the camera but really pretty next is I, I don't know if it's pronounced boreal blue I hope I'm pronouncing that right um, it is a pearlescent color it's PB29 and pearlescent which I'm guessing is mica and I I cannot wait to <laughs> Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. I wish I could have poured it for you guys because even pouring it, you could see the shimmer and it was absolutely gorgeous. So um, I might make another video and share that next time. Okay, this, I'm so excited. This is one of the one, there was two that I was especially excited to try. Just wetting it, it's like I can see some color separation and it's, this is the things that <laughs> this is what I love about watercolors. It's just it's just beautiful. It kind of has some blue and purple separating in the ceramic dish, so I can't see I can't wait to see what it does on paper. Okay, so it kind of is like a purple. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, I knew I was going to love this color. Going to so pretty.
So I wonder if that's going to separate. I'm going to add more water because I want to see if it does some uh, separation, color separation with the blue and the purple and all that. Um, I just love that. So pretty. Okay. That's my favorite of the day so far. <laughs> I can, I can see it separate. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, I can't wait to paint something with that. Next is in Danthrene Blue. It's made from PB60. And it's really good at, uh, I like this color for making my own kind of uh, indigo. But honestly, I would use this as my indigo. <laughs> Okay, that is really stunning. That is really nice. Very bright. The colors are just so crisp. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but they're very nice. Oh, I'm in trouble. I'm gonna wanna try every color from this brand. Really pretty. Okay, next is Azure Blue. So this is made from PB26. So it might granulate. Looks like. Looks very nice. Let's see if it granulates. Okay, next is turquoise green, which is made from PG7 and PB15 colon 3. So it's going to be a phthalo turquoise. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is pretty. Okay, I already like this one and I haven't even painted with it yet. Oh, that is really pretty. All right, I'm on camera. This is gorgeous. And these paints, they just feel nice. These feel like I'm painting with a luxury paint. Okay, that's really nice. Okay, next is the next color. I was really excited. It kind of drew me to the brand. Uh, I'm so excited to swatch this. This is one of the colors I've had on my wish list for a long time at Jackson's. So this is Norman Green. It's made from PG7 and PV16. Oh yeah, that's really nice. That's really pretty. I'm going to get it darker. That's really pretty. Oh, pretty. Okay, next is Sap Green. And Sap Green is made from PY139 and PG36. So really nice convenience green. That is really nice, really natural looking. Leans a little more yellow. Very nice, very natural looking and very nice. Very nice convenience cream. All right, so I love all of these. I would say my favorites are definitely the Boreal Blue, I can't even pretend to that, so I'm so excited to go paint with that. And the Norman Green, the Sar Rose. The only one that I'm not, um, that I'm not enamored with is actually this powdery pink. But I don't usually like to paint with opaque colors with white in them. It's still pretty and I can mix with it. And, uh, but these are very lovely. Oh, I'm so excited to paint with these. So now let's do the last two. Uh, now it's, 
burnt it's I think it's their burnt sienna but on there they had burnt sienna uh, but I'm pretty sure it's just burnt sienna uh, but these are from Belgium the maker of this that's actually a woman that makes these paints so this is from made from PBR 7 very nice that is um, very lovely and very useful color. Okay, next is Payne's Gray. Oh, that's really lovely. And I'm gonna add a bit more water to see the granulation in that. Gonna let that dry and see what kind of granulation we get, but that is very lovely. Um, oh, you guys, those are pretty. So I'm going to let those dry and then I will share them once they've dried. Okay, and here are the Ersaro watercolors swatches have all dried. Look at all of these gorgeous colors. Oh my goodness. So look at this. This is definitely my favorite, the Boreal Blue. They have a lot more pearlescent colors. I'm, I'm gonna need to try more. <laughs> I'm going to need to try more soon. Uh, so this is subtle, very subtle. The, it's got color separation as well as just a little bit of shimmer, but it's very sophisticated. It's not in your face. This could be on any painting. And yeah, I need a whole tub of that. But even this yellow, it's just, it's so lovely. And the Norman green, of course, absolutely stunning. There's a little bit, it looks like there's a little bit of granulation and color separation in the Norman green as well. So absolutely stunning. And then look at the Payne's Gray. That has to be the most interesting Payne's Gray I've ever seen in my life. Um, with the granulation and everything. I think that'd be gorgeous to paint some whales and that kind of thing. And then the burnt sienna. So there's the colors now that they've dried. All of these colors re-wet amazingly well and uh, I've fallen in love with another brand of watercolors. I'm going to pre-wet the neon colors. Set them down over here. So these are definitely harder to re-wet for, but the colors are very pretty. Okay, here's the orange. Oh, this is nice. So I actually bought these because I wanted to compare them, and I will do that in another video. Here's the pink. Here is the purple. I'm probably most excited about this. Here's the blue. Very bright. And compare these. I'm going to play with these um, and I want to get to know them better before I make an opinion, but they do come in a really nice metal tin. So these colors are very inspiring to me and I cannot wait to paint with them. Let's see, um, I, I will leave you with some artwork. I had time to finish my squirrel, and I really like the way the uh, tree turned out, especially, uh, actually more than the squirrel. But um, yeah, I finally had time to finish that. That was day two of Inktober. Um, I have, <laughs> I didn't like the way my bat turned out, but I don't like bats. It's, hard, it's very hard for me to paint something that I don't really like. But I thought, Let's see, I started tempting. Um, so I think this is gonna be really pretty to start painting this uh, brooch. This is for the prompt heist in the Inktober. And I wanted, the only thing I could think of is uh, jewels because <laughs> that's the only thing I would wanna paint. So I think this is going to be really pretty with a little bit of shimmer coming through on the camera. But there's just the littlest bit of shimmer 
but that really keeps it classy. And I wish I had time to paint that today with you, but stay tuned and I will be painting something. I'll probably paint a few things. I'm definitely going to be painting with these separate in a, an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. I hope you guys all have a really great day. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.